25 years ago, the Dayton Peace Agreement brought an end to the horrible war in Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia, and uh, created a new country, Bosnia-Herzegovina, consisting out of two entities, uh, the Republika Srpska of the Serb uh, entity and uh, the Federation of uh, the Bosniaks and the Croats. Still in this country, ethnic divisions and ethnic criteria play a big role, a too big role because many issues the country has, like many others, of course, like the environmental issue, the social issue, the employment uh, questions are far from being solved. The younger generation thinks differently. The younger generation thinks about these issues which are important for their life and uh, which should be solved or nearly solved in order to create uh, new opportunities for the young people also to stay in the country. We asked uh, several of these young people to give their opinion. We asked people in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, but also in Vienna, coming from the country, what their issues is, what their ideas and opinions uh, for the future is. Uh, and we will also have in the coming weeks uh, some two panel discussions in order to discuss uh, the future of the country because the future of Bosnia-Herzegovina is very important also for the future of the whole Western Balkan. My name is Ayla Boroza and I live in Sarajevo where I also work as a program director for Youth Initiative for Human Rights in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I believe that young people in Bosnia and Herzegovina must and can contribute to creating a society in which um, human rights and democracy and the rule of law are not merely advanced and respected, but they are considered to be mutually enforcing. However, faced with the with the current Bosnia Herzegovinian society, our the main component of our work is actually um, co consists in filling the gaps that our educational system has kind of left and we do this by implementing uh, non-formal educational models which provide our young participants with the necessary tools to combat segregation, to promote active citizenship and social transformation so that they can together work on, on promoting issues and, and rights that are important to us all here under, of course, human rights, democracy, and, and sustainable peace. So one of the ways in which we do this is through our Dealing with the Past program, which is oriented towards trans transitional justice and reconciliation. And the program focuses on individual and interpersonal, as well as social political forms of, of reconciliation. And we mainly conduct our work on a horizontal axis, meaning that we work primarily with um, the relationships between citizens or in our case, youth. Um, the assumption in our program is that direct um, intergroup contact, so dialogue and socialization, and exposure to peers from other ethnic groups will promote changes in both attitude as well as behavior and will then over time contribute to a deepening of reconciliation. Um, ultimately, of course, uh, working on a horizontal, horizontal axis, our um, aim is to lay the groundwork for a kind of institutional reconciliation, which is much needed in Bosnia and Herzegovina, so that this horizontal approach will ultimately lead to, um, to a more vertical approach to reconciliation. And an example of our dealing with the past program are, for example, our schools of different memories. Um, during these schools, young people from across Bosnia and Herzegovina, mainly aged from 18 to 25, are given an opportunity to visit places of pain, so to say, so places where war, war crimes were committed. And they are um, offered a unique opportunity to, to speak to both victims and survivors of war crimes, but also perpetrators. Our aim here, of course, is to give them a more 
objective and material truth um, on which they then can base uh, the forming of a new and unified narrative of, of the past war. We try to enable them to critically assess the narratives that they have somehow inherited in their communities or through their families or through their educational system so that they are offered different versions of, of that narrative and that they then can kind of create an, an amalgamation of those narratives and create an alternative way of um, dealing with and looking at the past. The ultimate goal here, here of course, is uh, through these non-formal educational programs to also create networks of young people to uh, allow them to come together and heal. Um, to avoid, I guess, traumatization because they are dealing with themes that are very delicate and that are very, very difficult to, to kind of absorb. To avoid any form of traumatization, young people work with psychologists while they're in these schools. And each day they have reflection sessions to kind of provide them with, a, with an opportunity to reflect on what they have heard and seen. In addition, um, when returning back to their local communities from which they come to our camps and our schools, um, these young people are particularly susceptible to stigmatization. So to avoid them kind of being left behind, we um, include them and integrate them in our activist network so that they have a space which is safe where they can kind of have access to like-minded peers and, and work together to for, towards furthering reconciliation. So these schools then um, gather young people from across ethnic lines um, and offer them a genuinely safe space in which they can objectively learn about the atrocities that have happened during the 90s wars and provide them an opportunity to um, to get to know each other and to actually experience what it means to be a young person in Bosnia and Herzegovina together so that they can bond and, and heal the wounds of our past together. Young people in, ba in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina grow up in an environment in which divisions resulting from the 1990s war become kind of a natural habitat. Um, and they are continuously um, surrounded by an environment um, in which othering is kind of a natural state, so that um, their education, for instance, and their socialization, or, or the lack thereof, is deeply permeated by the divisions of the Bosnian and Herzegovinian society. Adding to this, of course, and, and in extension thereof, you have these very ethnocentric narratives um, which kind of dictate how to, uh, what to opine and what to think and, and what to do in terms of the past. And so a combination of these th two things leaves the, the current situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina very dire. And if we don't face these issues of dealing with the past, um, the question becomes whether we can, we can prevent reoccurrence at all. So to us, um, dealing with the past is a, is a way of moving forward, um, especially given the complete neglect and lack of kind of any um, national or governmental approaches to, to reconciliation we are left with creating these uh, transitional justice mechanisms and, and reconciliation mechanisms on a, on a grassroots or a bottom-up approach. Um, so in order to kind of dis dismantle the very conflicting narratives that there are going on and permeate the Bosnian-Herzegovinian society, we really must uh, face this issue. And 
in doing so, we must, of course, always remember that we can't and we must not traumatize the young generation and we must not burden them with a past that they kind of did not experience firsthand. But we also must allow them and, and we have to create a space where they can learn from this history so that they can prevent it from happening again. <laughs>